crafters welcome to my channel today I receive a paper pad or pack um, and I wanted to do a review and maybe we'll make a card from it so um, I will put all the link uh, the link for these pads in the description but let's take a look so I got the Christmas season and violet bloom and these are six by six paper pads 160 GSM and honestly these are beautiful so it looks like it comes 12 designs and two sheets each which is great and they're not double-sided, so you don't have to sacrifice one for the other. But look at these designs. I love, oh, this stripe one. This stripe one would be really good for uh, emboss uh, resist technique. So you emboss the image on there, and then you get the stripe look in the back. Oh, this is nice. I love this. I love that uh, that design. This is this would be nice for a scrapbook. I can definitely see a scrapbook for this one. I love this diamond shape. It's pretty. Ooh, florals. Oh, I, I love the the purple theme, the pink and purple theme. Makes it easier for you to do any kind of layering um, or any card designs where you have to figure out color themes. So I love that. Look at that. That is a beautiful paper. More florals. I like this. These two would actually go together. And it's, it's a great mix between both a, a simple pattern and having images. So I like that as well, because that helps when you are trying to create um, different types of, uh, when you're trying to input different pattern papers together and takes the guessing away from it. This is cute. I think I already have an idea for a paper. Looks like I got three in this one. Right, is that the same one? I think it is, maybe not, I don't know. It looks like it is, no, I think it's different. These are beautiful. Let's put these together. Oh, there is the other one, ha 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 ha, okay. All right. And this is the Christmas season. Now I did get these, um, it's from an Amazon seller uh, that contacted me. Um, and of course, I, I made sure before I agreed to do a review, I made sure that I went to look at the paper first because I'm not going to do a review on anything that I won't use or, oh, this is beautiful, or anything that um, I would not recommend. But these, I, these patterns are gorgeous. I can definitely see me using this during Christmas, especially if you're trying to do um, mass cards. You can definitely use uh, these pattern papers for mass production of cards. Oh, this is cute. A scrapbooking image in the middle. Maybe like a little, um, what's it called? Uh, oh my God, I forgot the name. But die cut pieces in the outsides. Oh, that's beautiful. This makes me want to make a six by six card. I don't know if it's a thing, but honestly, any card size you want to make is your card, so you can make any card size you want. Oh, I ended up getting three of this one. It's pretty. Oh, look at the. Oh, look at the little. Uh, the little skates. I, I could see me using this with. Uh, the Spellbinder skate die, oh, that'd be great. This is beautiful. Oh, the cute little socks. Oh my God, this is universal. You can actually use this for baby if you wanted to as well. 
one that is pretty oh that is so pretty presents i like i like you like brief pieces this is cute you'll definitely see me making cards with this pack i'll probably do like a bulk uh, where I'll just do like a mass production of cards. Um, but which one am I going to use today? I'm going to go with this one today. Because I have an idea for this one. This is going to be a different video set. So you'll hear me drinking some coffee. Um, I am just waking up. And I'm trying to get this video done before my children wake up as we all know once kids wake up it's all about them and they were off for two weeks all right let's see all right so we're gonna do an a2 size card first thing first is I'm going to die cut this with my waffle flower a2 layer dies and kind of make it smaller and then I'll show you the idea that I am coming up with okay so this is what we're gonna use I think we're gonna use this I'm not too sure yet I was trying to find one that was this color, but I can't seem to find any in my huge cardstock. Um, but we're going to make this work. Hold on. Let me see if this works. Nope, that's too dark. Ah, we'll figure it out. Okay. So first thing first is we're going to die cut this with so this is the a2 uh the additional a2 layer dies and this is a, um just the a2 layer dies so i have both sets um so what i'm thinking is i want to have a matte look to it um so uh i want to matte it on some on the cardstock with that white ooh, ooh, ooh. So, I think that's a pretty good matte layer. So we're just gonna cut this out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna matte this on here, right? Then we're going to cut these into strips and then we're gonna die cut a square in the center and we're kind of just gonna make like a diamond kind of a shape. I'll show you as we're going through it. So as I stated earlier, my kids are home. Um, funny story, I did not know that my kids were out of school for two weeks because they were already out of school for a week. So I figured, you know, it's a week. It's, you know, fallen intercession, they call it. I'm going to die cut. I'm, I'm going to die cut. I'm going to make strips of these and I'm going to make them at mm, about an eighth, an eighth of an inch. I think an eighth. Of an inch. Hold on. I don't think I like that one. Yep. An eighth of an inch. So, um, funny story is we were going out and I told them that they were going to have to get their school clothes ready and I thought they had school. Well, they found out that they were out of school for two weeks. So I was like, well, all right, let's go to SeaWorld. <laughs> That's like all I could think of. Like that was, that was my parenting moment right there. I said, um, clearly I have dropped the ball on this one. So I'm gonna use both of these dies. All right. And what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to cut the bigger die out of hmm, out of this and then the smaller die out of this. Yeah, that's the plan. So I'm just gonna cut these down. just to make it easier so I could run both of them at the same time. And I'm going to die cut these. 
Lastly, I want to do a video because there's a lot of videos, right, with the big, big YouTubers who are, um, who show their craft rooms and I am, I'm not going to lie, I am guilty of it as well, where I saw their craft room, I'm just like, oh my God, this is what I want. I want my craft room to be like this. And again, I had no intentions of being a YouTuber during that time. So it's not like I was like, I want it to be like this so that I can eventually have this beautiful YouTube channel. But no, I, um, I just wanted a really, really big craft room. And so I'm going to show you how my craft room is. And it's kind of funny. Um, if you watch uh, Kathy Zilski, um, she started as a uh, craft slash dining room. And it's kind of funny because I took over <laughs> my dining room and turned it into my craft room. And so I didn't, I didn't realize it until like later on where I was like, oh my God, I have a craft slash dining room. And so um, the beauty is my craft room change, will change every three years. Why? Because I'm military. And being military... Um, we move every three to four years. And so that moving, ooh, 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 I'm trying to get this, hmm, this is not working to my, oh, there we go. All right, so that is the idea that we're going for, okay? So, let me go right ahead. Let's see, hear this together. I think I want to 3D pop this up, up with uh, with foam tape. But let's go ahead and glue this together. I'm going to use Barely Arts glue. And I'm just going to put a nice little swirl. Not too much. And then gonna try to center this as much as possible and the best way to do that is to use the line back here and that's gonna help me center it so I just made sure I centered it on my mat and then I used the line here to kind of help me make sure that that point is touching right and then these points are touching so I know that it is decently centered. Now, we're going to take these strips here and we're just going to put them outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a little line like that. And I'm on, honestly, it might be a lot easier for you to just do it from the, on, on the back of the actual strips. Um, I'm doing too much. That's what it is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, oops, we're going to flip this over and we are going to cut off the excess. Perfect. Now, I am dropping things back and forth back here. Now, I want to pop this up, but I'm thinking I also want to put some purple in the background of here to kind of just give it that faded look. So give me a second. Let me go ahead and go get some ink. And I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Amethyst from Simon Says Positively Saturated Ink. a lot 
we're just gonna see that just add that little bit of purple at the end and that's just gonna give us this a little a little flare a little something Instead of having just plain edges. Perfecto mundo. Okay. Look at that. This adds that little look to it. I love it. I thought this was bent, but that's just a water mark from the design. All right. So now we're going to stamp a sentiment on here. And maybe we'll heat emboss this. Yes. That's what we're gonna do. Now, I never, never, ever, ever, <laughs> never have I ever heat embossed using an acrylic block. Ooh, hold on. I have an idea here. I'm just gonna line this up. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna line it up with this. That way. It'll be easy for me to make sure it's centered. Perfect, okay. Um, I am gonna take just a little, just to hold this down. Heat emboss. Take some Versamark ink, and we're gonna use, we're gonna use some silver. Okay, so we're just gonna, powder that down. We're going to prime this so we can get a good impression. Get this nice and wet. Line that up. And then hold it down. Release. That looks pretty good. Now, I don't remember which silver this is. I'm sure it's probably Ranger. Um, oh, that looks pretty good. Uh, I just don't remember, but I'll put a really good one. Um, silver embossing powder that you can use in the description or you can find it on my blog this description uh will actually only be the pattern paper um but my blog will have all of the materials that i use oh that was close so i warmed it up and now i'm just Bringing it to, warming up the back side. And then, warming up the front. All right. Now let me just wipe down here. I do like to leave my, uh, if I use Versa markings, I leave them on my stamp just because I was told that it actually helps with priming the stamp. Um, so I leave those, I don't really clean it off. Okay, look at that. Wishing you best of luck. So we're gonna place that right there in the center. It's a little bit warped due to the heat embossing, but what we're gonna do is we're going to use some foam tape to straighten it out. And I can hear the steps upstairs. All right, so now we're just gonna remove the release paper and then I'm 
Okay. Just gonna center this up there. Look at that. Awesome, 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 awesome. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue in the back of this. And we're gonna center it. I think it's beautiful. It's simple, not too difficult. You can actually probably mass produce these. I'm going to add, of course, some sequences. That doesn't look bad. I think it keeps the clean and simple look together. So I'm just gonna glue that down. And then, and then we'll, that'll be the finished card. So we're just gonna glue this down. And ta-da, this makes the finished card. Look at that. And this is simple. This is very, very simple. You can definitely mass produce this. All right, guys, it has been awesome. And I can't wait to see you guys soon with another card video. Bye.